Hello everyone, this is Karthik from the Hidden Developer YouTube channel and welcome back to my channel. So, uh, in this video we are going to see the list of programmable APIs that Tyson provides for the developers to develop various applications. So, in my previous video we saw how to install an uh, Tyson TV SDK in the system. So, now we have installed Tyson TV SDK in our system. And before starting with any programming task, so uh, let us analyze what are the stuff that we can program as a developer using Tyson T SDK. So for this, Tyson provides a list of APIs for us to use. Uh, so to, to program various uh, services, to, to implement various uh, services in our application. So let us take a look at the list of APIs that we uh, need to develop. So this API, so the knowledge of this API is very essential because when you an SDK, with the knowledge of this APIs, you develop various features in your program and you bring the final application. So uh, this application has to be within the limits of the uh, provided API. So uh, there is no hacking stuff in this video. Uh, just to know, to get an idea of what are the list of the, uh, the services that you can manipulate or implement using the Tyson TV API. So let's take a look at the list of the APIs that uh, Tyson provides. So when you take a look at the list, you have Tyson Web Device API, the TV Audio API, Samsung Product API, Screen Saver, Viewport Scaling, IM Multitasking, iframe American. Uh, TS, TLS support, web storage and TV file system. So that's a lot of uh, awesome stuff that Tyson provides for us developers to uh, manipulate various um, services and various, implement various services in our applications. Apart from this list of uh, programmable APIs provided by Tyson, you can also make use of the external APIs that are available in the internet, provided that the Hobe the list of tools are provided that they play safe along with other standard Tyson TV API. So the, 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 the list that you see here right now on the screen is the actual list or the, the majority of the list you can say are the most commonly used list uh, by developer for implementing various features. So let's go through it one by one. So the first one being the Tyson Web Device API. So Tyson Web Device API uh, uh, provides or uh, provides a view that Tyson is a web-enabled device. With that uh, this API provides us a view that Tyson is a web-enabled device, able to communicate with the web, able to exchange data with the outside world through the web. So Tyson Web Device API is uh, the one of the main content that. Uh, uh, comes inside the Tyson Web Device API is a TV window API where you can take control of the TV window screen, uh, take control of the content that is being displayed in the screen, take control of the window size, uh, window size, and implement things, concepts like picture in picture, audio, uh, video, and other stuff that you put on the screen. So using this API, we can decide what is the content that is to be shown on the uh, screen right now. Uh, so, uh, the concept like picture in picture so can be explained later in further videos. And uh, uh, the content that you can put inside in a TV window or either external content that is downloaded from the web or internal content that is generated as part of your application or as a part of user actions, etc. etc. So, these are the stuff uh, like. Uh, so when you consider a TV as a web-enabled device, so uh, this uh, this is the API that you need to look into if you uh, implement a web-oriented concepts. So this is the API that you have to look into. So the TV audio control API. So, uh, so this uh, API uh, provides you control, uh, programmatic control of the audio. Uh, content of the TV. So TV, you generally your TV is a streaming device, right? 
fluid streams, various TV programs, the content from various applications. Uh, either there, there will be a streaming content or some other uh, random text content or image. You can play anything on TV that may be games, etc. So you need control of the audio, right? So, uh, so uh, let us consider a case where your application is in the foreground and some other uh, application want to interfere, say for example, a system notification. So, so when the system notification comes, your app has to play well with uh, the other applications, right? So that's, that's one of the rules that you need to follow. So when the system notification comes, you should detect that and make sure that you the notification sound is heard to the user by reducing the volume. So at that time, you need programmatic control of the TV volume, right? So the TV audio control API is one of the most commonly used APIs mm -hmm. where you can take control of the TV volume. Okay, so the next one being the Samsung product API. It is, uh, um, this API uh, gets you to retrieve product specific information. Uh, and that is, uh, this is a common API used in Tyson TV, used in other Samsung products too in Samsung legacy platforms also. So this uh, this uh, API helps you uh, retrieve the product specific information uh, from your TV like the system info, version of the software that is being used, the operating system, the hardware software features, the memory type. So this API uh, uh, we use your, your TV as an entertainment device where you have audio video control where you can play uh, various uh, uh, multimedia files uh, and also you have control over the subtitles that are being shown and the video content displayed and we can also uh, for the you know, for the audio services where it is uh, played on demand so um, uh, Tyson TV is basically the platform right that is the HTML for a base platform so uh, you're going to use the video element in its standard uh, video uh, tag that is given in HTML file for your video oriented task. So the practical side of it, you can look uh, uh, you can look into the practical side of it in our further video tutorials. Then you have the AV Play API. Uh, so in the AV Play API, uh, you can play video on demand services along with the digital rights management, you get all the standard controls that the user expects from a video application like play, pause, uh, and all the video seeking functionalities. Everything is built in, so you don't have to uh, uh, specifically program each of these actions. So that is uh, built in as a part of uh, this Samsung uh, product APA. So this APA, um, is designed with the Samsung product being an entertainment device, so it has input support for audio, video, streaming services, input support for uh, the control of the video and audio that is being played without the user specifically having to program each of the individual uh, stuff. So these are the stuff that you get, uh, these are the control that the developer gets by making use of the Samsung product API and in screen saver. So screensaver is a concept uh, that avoids uh, uh, screen burning, right? So when your screen is inactive for a long time, uh, the screensaver will help you uh, help you uh, change content of the screen if the, your screen is inactive for a long time. So uh, Samsung screensaver provides APIs to the developer to say that hey, uh, this is the time I need to put on a screensaver on my screen. So screen saver is essential for if your app, if your app is long running app like a game or something and if your app is left out for a while then to prevent screen burn, Samsung for screen saver API. So screen saver API, you should use screen saver API like, okay, uh, if your app is idle for say about 5-10 minutes then you call the screen saver, tell the Samsung, through the Samsung API, you can set the screen saver, etc. You can make use of that. And you port scaling. Is another API where you need to change the uh, viewport. Say, for example, in the case of notification, or as in, as in the case of opening another app, or uh, like a specific scenario in your app where 
your window size has to be custom and not in a full screen mode. So those are the areas where you need where you need control of the window size window size. That is what we call as the viewport scaling. So normally this is done using the standard viewport uh, meta tag of HTML5 that uh, we'll see a practical example of this in one of our feature tutorials. So uh, viewport scaling is also essential. You can make use of the viewport scaling using this uh, viewport scaling APIs. And in IME, it's called an input method editor, right? Uh, so like uh, UTV is an entertainment device which shows content to the user. There is also a scenario in which it accepts uh, content from the, uh, it accepts input from the user. Maybe a mouse click, maybe an action, recognition, the use of gestures, etc. So there are various ways by which a user can interact with the TV. So uh, um, the main point of interaction with the TV is the TV remote, right? So the TV remote has very limited um, capacity to enter in text kind of information. So in that case, IME comes to the rescue. So IME displays um, full virtual keyboard kind of stuff in places automatically where you uh, have to enter the uh, textual content. And using the keyboard arrow keys, you can navigate to the specific uh, letters of that and uh, select your text without much difficulty. So IME uh, provides a set of APIs for you to use. So you can call the IME, show the virtual keyboard wherever you want the uh, user to enter some input information, etc. So these are the places where IME, you can use, it, you can use of this IME API. So multitasking, your uh, TV is a multitasking device. It's along with your application, uh, various other applications uh, that runs along with your app in the TV. So when the user decides to switch, to, uh, switch the application from use to say, some other task, let's say YouTube. So when YouTube fires up, your application should minimize. And during that minify action, your app should stay, save the current state in some place, save. Uh, most probably it will either the data will be saved locally in the TV, TV memory or uh, in a cloud or someplace say so when you when the user switch back to your application by using the same data you can currently restore the actual state of the your application from where the user actually left off. So if you uh, need your application to come back to one state then you should make use of the multitasking API. Where in this AP you have options for saving your data, retrieving your data, setting the application state, etc. So in iframe element, iframe is a HTML specification in which you can insert external content directly into a specific portion of your web page. So this is done using the standard iframe elements in the TV. So the external page that you can include any uh, I, I external page to your application specifically, but make sure that the page is well safe. Only use, uh, uh, only include external pages that you actually want to, so that uh, there comes a little bit of security risk when you uh, show um, include site receipts with uh, malicious content. So make sure that you only show the right content, either the content from your website or uh, someplace safe, so your resources will also be safe when using that. And make sure that uh, whatever the web, web, you should follow the web standards when you use the iframe element. So we'll take a look at the, the list of steps that you have to follow when you make use of the iframe can be seen in one of the later videos. Uh, uh, so that's it. With if you need to include some content, then and interact with them. Then you make use of the iframe element, TLS support, then already we see, uh, we can see that uh, our Samsung TV is a web enabled device. So it's communication with other devices or the server through the web. So at that time, when communication, we make sure that the data that we exchange to the uh, other place should be secure. 
and we have to ensure that the data is not accessible to the third party elements and um, we have to make sure that no disabled persons of data and modified data in the middle. So in that case, uh, we need a transaction layer security to uh, sanitizing GV provides APIs for uh, making use of the TLS support also. And uh, next one being the storage of TV file system. So normally when you take an application, the one thing that you cannot um, deny is the data that is being part of your application. So um, you have certain number of data along with your application. Data either comes along with your application or uh, something that is user generated. So you need uh, a place to save the data, right? So um, Tyson provides the web storage API where uh, you can store uh, um, this, you can use the same way uh, uh, like uh, storing the data in a session storage or local storage or you can even use the TV file system storage using these APIs or you can store the data. Uh, storing data also comes under multitasking where if you use researching between your app and other apps so you need uh, the data of the application state to be stored safe or someplace. And then when the user comes back to your application, then you can uh, you have to make use of this data and you have to restore your application state. You can make use of all this. So these are the list of the common APIs that uh, uh, you can use uh, provided by Tyson. Uh, so to implement the most common features. Apart from these common list of APIs, you can also make use of the third-party APIs, provided that uh, they play well, uh, they play safe, uh, along with the TV APIs, and um, uh, and uh, by including the if uh, the external APIs, if they do not play well with the TV, then there may be a chance that your TV application may get rejected once you upload to the app store. So. Um, so make sure that uh, the third party library that you are using is compatible with the TV platform or the TV APIs. So these are the list of the common APIs. Uh, so we, uh, when we go further, we will uh, take a look into the list of new APIs that are not included here along with this. And uh, as time goes by, we will also uh, look into uh, developing uh, various application concepts using these APIs also. So um, that's it from now. Thanks for watching. And uh, in our next video, we'll actually create a new sample Tyson TV application and run it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's it. Stay tuned.